Hi folks, welcome back, and this time it's a painting tutorial. I haven't done one of these in ages. Um, I know I'm not like the the best painter out there, but um, sometimes it's just good to see some different techniques and how some other people paint them. Um, and I'm going um, a bit retro at the moment and trying to recollect some of my old third edition styled uh, 40k. Um, it's a system I really liked at the time. Um, and I thought I'm going to try and get back into it, see if it was as good, or is it just all nostalgia. So I've got a hand on a couple of the... Um, old metal Kathjans to start me off as Imperial Guard was my uh, first investment into the uh, the world of wargaming and uh, I'm, what I'm trying to gonna do, go through is just do it all in different stages I'm gonna um, put just a, a list of all the colors I use as I go through um, the range I'm using is Vallejo um, I've been using them for eight, quite a while now um, I've, I've used variety as you can see the actual miniature itself is on an old GW pot um, it's one of the best uh, handles I've got for painting my miniatures, so I've kept, uh, I don't know, about probably about 20 of these pots, uh, just to blue tack miniatures down on the top of it. And as you may have noticed, my, my guys on NMDA for base, I've never been a big fan of the really big um, GW bases. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to go with Vallejo paints. Um, it's mostly the game colour. Uh, another reason for this is uh, the game colours uh, colors are very much like the early uh, Games Workshop paint range. Um, you know, you've got your standard bloody red, blood red and goblin greens and chain mail. And... So I'm actually going to go like, almost full retro here and um, paint this guy up as I would have painted him back then. Except with today's standards. I mean, I still have a uh, couple of my Kafchans that have been painted my old way. Uh, most of them was, I think, bronze flesh and then a brown ink over the top. And it was pretty horrendous. So it'll be good fun just to try and get back into it. As I say, I'm not a brilliant painter. And I'm not doing the no airbrush techniques or anything. This is just me painting my old style as I do now. Um, I really do mix how I paint up, but I don't use any of the modern techniques very well. I'm too, too stuck in my ways. In fact, I'm even coming up from a black undercoat. So um, it should be nice and dark as uh, I remember the miniatures being back then. All right, guys. So this is just the guy at the moment. It's just super glued down into the MDF base and we'll go from there. So uh, I start with the black undercoat. Now, I didn't bother spraying him. I literally painted this on. So this is uh, just the game colour black. Uh, just thinned down and given a good coat so all the metal's covered up. Next up I painted all the skin areas. Um, leaving everything else I can. Just the black itself. Same as the eyes and the mouth. And that's all just left in black. And I painted all a dark flesh tone. Um, I took my time with the flesh. Um, I put a lot of effort in mainly because it's most of this top half of the model um, being as they are the Castellans. So next up was dwarf skin. Um, I did a couple of thin coats uh, leaving only the deepest recesses the uh, original dark flesh tone underneath. Uh, after that I did elf skin tone uh, picking just the raised up areas again on the, over the flesh. Uh, again, kept kept the coat thin, um, so I could do it in two thin coats, just to give that more translucent feel to it. Um, but yeah, that's all it is so far. I then put a slightly thinned um, flesh wash. Uh, I think it's still a game colour. Uh, no, it's game wash um, from Vallejo. Um, just all over all the skin. It's just kind of unites all the colours together and. Um, makes my <laughs> not so clever shading look a bit tidier so once the wash is all dried i then went in and put uh, the black in around the mouth to make sure it's all tidy and the eyes as well uh, then using off white i painted the, um, the the eye and the teeth in then with back to the elf skin tone um, i re-highlighted because now with that wash it shows me even better now where the highlights need to be just on the really raised areas um another coat of thin down elf um skin tone and then on the extreme parts like the knuckles and stuff i use a combination of the elf skin tone mixed with a bit of the off-white and about 50 50 just for the real highlights top of the uh the cheeks that kind of thing so next was painting the trousers a dark green and the shirt a camo green the shirt itself was then um, highlighted up with dead flesh and then a mix of dead flesh and off-white on the outside edges of the shirt itself. While the trousers themselves were given a, a paint of sick green, um, again leaving the darkest recesses, the original dark green from underneath. 
which in turn was highlighted up with some off-white just added to the mix screen itself just picking out the um, higher edges and trying to follow the obviously the line of the um, the sewn patterns and that kind of thing just to make them stand out a bit more next up I do the pouches um, all the leather work I want to do uh, such as the um, the scabbard for the knife um, and also I do the dark patches um, just for a little bit of camouflage on the trousers in a dark brown and I believe it's called um, charred brown unfortunately my, my label is actually peeled off my uh, dark brown uh, I'm pretty sure it's charred brown of the uh, uh, game color collection uh, also just on the patches themselves added in a bit of off-white um, just to highlight them uh, as well um, I'm obviously doing the leather itself in a different color again I then go all the pouches and the leather it with leather brown, funny enough, um, which I then highlight um, with off-white just along all the edges and um, probably doing like a uh, less than 50-50 on the first one and then do a proper much lighter, probably like 75-25 with the white just to do a real edge um, highlight on them. So with that done, we're going to the bandages and that. Uh, the top one on the red bandana and his other arm will be done in a dark flesh tone, uh, just to get the base colour down. And it's a desert yellow onto this, what I'll turn into a bandage on this left arm. The bandage, uh, the bandage then got a highlight of bone white. And then I did a gory red back over with bandana and just his other right hand arm, um, the, the bandage around that arm there. And I also used the gory red on the bandage itself just to look like some damage had been taken there. So I finished with the red by doing a bloody red um, highlight right over it all. This takes a couple of coats and I also put just a few dabs of the uh, bloody red on his bandage as well just to add on the outer edges to give more of a yeah, fresh blood feel. And then I highlighted up the red with a bronzed flesh um, just to do the edge highlights on the uh, the banners, uh, the bandana and his um, arm sash as well. Okay, so next up I just do a quick tidy up and paint all the um, areas that I want black uh, with another thin coat of black. So just tidy up the shoes, the gun, and I also go over any of the metal parts, any of the buckles. Um, as you can see, his chain on his hand, round his neck, it's all just redone over and tidied up in the black. And the black areas themselves are then highlighted with a 50-50 of black and what um, cold grey, I believe it's called. And then um, a final highlight of cold grey on itself, just on the edges. So next I'll just do all the metal areas with gun metal. At the moment I'm still using the model colour uh, gun metal. Um, it's not bad, I haven't found some really good metals. Um, it's not quite as smooth as uh, some other ones I've had. But then again it varies. I mean I, I did army paint for a while and liked their, well, I think it's gun metal as well. Um, then I bought their chain metal and it had just really big flakes in it, it wasn't very nice. Um, this one's pretty good, I'm quite happy with it, um, but I have heard that probably the better one is the air colour uh, version, it's designed for the air guns, because it's, it's a lot thinner um, and goes on a lot smoother. So once this one's run out I'll probably go to that, but it does me for now, it keeps me happy, um, I just do it to make sure I thin it down and um, do two good coats of it over all the metal parts. Next I'll just do a sepia wash over all the metallics. Um, I do this just to give it more of a grimy kind of um, feel to it. Um, I, 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 will not, I used to do like black but it gets more of like a clean finish. With the sepia it kind of almost gives it like a rusty edge feel to it. Um, for the jungle fighters I think it's quite appropriate. So then once that's uh, dried I then highlight the metal with a uh, I think it's chain mail. Um, and also during while I was waiting for it to dry, I did the hair in Parasite Brown and um, I also put a, a night blue on the lens of which I assume some sort of torch attachment uh, to the last gun. So um, I then paint the hair and add a bronze flesh tone and I added to the highlight spikes and a dot on the top and then did a umbar wash over the top of it all just to darken it up and I used an ultramarines blue uh, to highlight the torch attachment and then just added a uh, amount of off-white kept it thin uh, towards the edges and to the center um, I was trying to go for like a torchy look I don't mind it I'm quite happy with the result there um, I know the other options to have that kind of lens effect but that reminds me more of like um, 
you know, like glass or something which doesn't give out light. Um, so I, I was happy with what I did. Um, I think he looks all right. So the final bit here, all I do is uh, dry brush and partly stipple uh, some charred brown uh, down from the trousers, up up the boots, uh, any of the lower half, a couple of splashes up on the uh, shirt, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and then I do a lighter one of beastie brown over the top of it, just giving that kind of muddy, worn kind of feel to it. I, I don't really like the clean feel of these uh, of models normally. So that's for me to finish it off, and then I just uh, give it a coat of varnish, and that's it to be ready to be based. So this is the chap just finished off now. Um, yeah, I've just based them up. I've just gone for a basing material of uh, I use filler, and then just uh, a mix of uh, sawdust, whatever they call it, uh, flock. <laughs> uh, sorry, I haven't used it in ages. I'm usually usually using static grass, uh, but I've wanted a bit of a muddy kind of jungly floor, swampy feel. And then uh, just a bit of clump foliage as well on the base. Uh, all the model was varnished in that. And uh, that's how I left it. Um, and if, if you're interested, um, pretty much all the model barring the eyes, I used um, uh, a paintbrush from Creative Models. It's a red uh, sable Klinsky brush. Um, yeah, I always go for uh, Klinsky sable for all my brushes. Um, I've gone through quite a few brushes, different types. Uh, but the most cost effective of these are the creative models. Um, uh, same with all my paints. Uh, if you if you want to find a store, I don't know around you know the rest of the world, but I don't know if they uh, post the rest of the world. But S and M and stuff, um, they are well worth having a look at. Uh, I'll, I'll try and put a link up in the description. That's where I buy all my um, Vallejo mo uh, paints from and all my brushes. Um, so yeah, creative models. Um, I mean. When it comes to brushes, there's always a chance you'll get a duff one. When I first started, I always used Citadel brushes, and then I just had a run of duff ones. They wouldn't stay together, wouldn't keep a point. Um, the Army Painter ones are quite good, uh, with the big triangular handle. Um, they've always been quite good, um, but I was never a big fan of the triangular handle myself. Um, I know uh, people use um, Winsor Newton, uh, very fine. Uh, brushes but they're not really expensive <laughs> so for me for more of a budget sable brush I went for creative models and they've been really good um, I know some people said uh, synthetics have caught up nowadays but I did buy a set of um, creative model synthetics and no uh, they're still still nothing like them um, nothing keeps the point quite as well as Kalinsky sable, Kalinsky sable brushes um, so yeah so if you're interested, I did it all with a, a number two brush. It's a fairly big brush, really, so you can get the paint on um, all but the eyes. So I hope that was helpful to you. I mean, if, you, if you'd like me to do more of these as I go through my retro collection and go back and start buying some random bits and bobs from my older years, um, let me know. Um, I mean, obviously, there's loads of painting guys out there, and people that paint far better than I do. But as I say, sometimes it's just nice to watch someone else do something and see what they use and um, see the methods that they, they, they use to it. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching and um, hopefully you can subscribe and like the video and uh, I'll see you next time. So, Thou Alice.